Good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. So I realized this morning that all my camera mounts I had left in the equipment over at the job site so I thought well I better grab my spare one from the house which I hadn't put together yet and uh, bring it here this morning because I'm going to need it to mount my camera in the hinge joint of the payloader so I can get some good views of what's going on. Nice thing about these the way I've designed them is you can clamp these to hydraulic hoses anything that you can get that clamp on you can clamp it to it now these i buy online they're called small rig um, they work great to position my phone in any position i want you just loosen that up and you can move it wherever you want to move it and then as soon as you tighten this up nothing moves what i do differently with mine is they originally have these little jam deals that go up against whatever you have on it such as an insta 360 camera or gopro mount or something like that the problem is these slip so what i do is i throw them away i just go to the bolt spin i get a quarter inch nut put on there jam everything tight and they never move so got that ready to go jump on this loader uh, it's going to be a busy weekend. I've got a lot of things I want to get done. We'll see what I can get done, but loader is top priority because we've got to use it next week. I've got a primer pump off of a fire truck that uh, I need to build a carrying roll cage, basically I call it, out of some one-inch tubing to mount this in with its little oil tank that it requires. Uh, we use these for priming our irrigation wells. They actually suck the water up the well casing until the Berkeley pump can grab it. So I want to get that done. And then I've got my 1150 International Feed Grinder in the shop. And uh, if you remember from the videos from that, uh, the loading auger is not on it. Uh, they had taken the loading auger off, long story short, they took it off so they could fit down their uh, feed alleyways and their hog facility. And they left that loading auger just lay outside so the mechanical drive is all rusted up i had rooted out of the dirt with the bobcat when i went to get the uh, feed grinder so i'm going to fix all that so that i don't have to shovel ear corn in it because shoveling 3,000 pounds of ear corn is not fun so i went down to rife's and winnemac jeff hooked me up with all the bearings that i need got me a new shaft u joints and all that stuff so we'll get that put back together so be all separate videos on this so let's kind of tell you what we're doing so Let's get working on the 621 here and uh, see if we can get those bearing races pulled out. Kind of got some ideas. I kind of slept on it last night. Got some ideas how we're going to get them out. So let's get started on it. Wilson, are you all right? Yeah, Wilson's choking over there. Might need to go check on him. But All right, let's get at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld two 3 8 bolts to that bearing race. You can see my ground clamp on there. Uh, and I'm going to put a puller between them bolts and push on that center shaft and it should pull that bearing race out. And then if that works well, we'll do the inner bearing race the same way and pull that one out. So I just grabbed the little arc captain welder for this. That way I didn't have to drag the big welder over here and get the extension cord out for it and, and all that. So let's get those welded up and see what happens. Okay. Get our first bolt in here. And put it right, right there. We can get it in there. Try that right there. The nice thing is the uh, steel won't stick to the cast iron, we just don't want to melt it. Kind of get an idea of where we're going to be here. Now this puller come from my uh, viewer Pete. So I always like to use tools that my viewers send me. Oh, this is going to work wonderful. Hopefully. 
Yeah, that should work enough to pull that out. It's not in there super tight. Just can't get a good pry on it to get it out. Oh, we got that. We can... I'm going to go grind a little off this bolt to make it a little bit straighter. Well, get that bolt ground off a little bit. Get it up in here and get it welded in. It's definitely a, it's not a tight area to work, just a awkward area to work here. We need to put it about right there. Take get my hand out of the way so I can see what's going on here. Just put it about right there. It's crooked, but it's gonna have to be. Oh yeah, I think that'll work. It's gonna have to be because the the puller's not quite wide enough. I cheated a little bit by well or grinding that bolt head off. Like I said, it shouldn't take much to pull this race out. It's loose. I just can't get a good pull on it. Puller set up here. These hydraulic hoses might be in the way. I have to figure out a way of holding them over. Oh, yeah, should work. Some washers on there. Now there is a ball I gotta try to get out of there as I go. go a little farther. Oh, not quite. Okay, so we got the ball out, so we don't have to worry about dropping that. Good thing we saved that ball, that's like five bucks. Oh, my well broke on top. But, but, it's coming out. So that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. 
So I'm going to go ahead and weld that one back and uh, we'll pull it some more. Well, I think I got a little bit of a problem because the inner race won't go through the outer race. I'm surprised it won't. So now I got to figure this out. I was hoping maybe they'd catch and it'd pull them both off at the same time, but I don't think I'm going to get that lucky. Now, let me figure this out. Okay, let's try this again with that inner race burnout. We should get the outer one out. We are really gonna have to really gonna have to flush this uh, transmission out now with all these uh, torch sparks and everything else in it. But it should be a little forgiving being the age of it. Oh. Hot. Hey, it's out. Look at that. It's out. All right. Now we gotta get that race off. So we're going to heat this inner race, see if we can't get it to come off this uh, shaft. Got our puller set up again. A little tough to get. Something happened. Yeah, something happened. is in there oh, no. oh boy so I actually welded the jaws of the puller to the bearing race
able to come up with a measurement for this, but I still want to do that for the mixture of all we need. And Well, I may have welded the puller to the bearing race, but at least the bearing race is out of there. I did have to notch it just a little bit to kind of relief it a little so it would come out a little easier. So there's that one. Here's the other one. And then here's the double race. Now the double race is the expensive part. I actually found this on Amazon. It's a, we got the good Timken numbers off of it. And uh, I found it on Amazon for $555. These bearings are actually more common bearings and they're only about $50 a piece. So the only problem is, is it's coming down to finding one of these in the United States. Every one we found is either India or where was that other one at? Thailand was one. So we're going to call RPM case uh, Monday and uh, see if by chance they have one in stock because one of the largest parts hub for case is right here in indiana so they might have one in stock so we'll see what happens so at least it's out now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, flush the transmission i got kind of a good idea i took the pump out of the napa parts washer and I'm going to try to circulate some diesel fuel through the pan of the transmission and see what I can rinse out. And then we're going to come through the top hole and we're going to try to rinse out up through there and see what we can get out. So let's try it and see what happens. Okay, so I got it flushed out. I got a lot of bearing material out. And now I've got my bore scope. And we're actually checking the gears in here. Well, you can't really see. There you go but it's hard to do one-handed but i've been doing a lot of uh, exploring in the transmission with the bore scope and uh, it looks like all the gears are intact the ones that i can see have come up from the bottom and uh everything in there looks pretty good i've got it pretty clean in there now i mean that's the bottom of the transmission there's a few little things in there I got to try to get out yet with a magnet, but uh, for the most part, well, there's another gear right there. You can see the teeth look okay on it. There's a little bit of stuff up there on like a shelf. So I'm going to do a little more cleaning, but I think for the most part, we've got it cleaned out. Well, I think we got lucky, and I don't think there is any damage to any gears or anything like that. So, uh... We're going to get the bearings ordered for it. We'll have to get a new gasket ordered for it. And uh, then we'll put it back together. But we're out of time for today. But I'm happy that we got it all tore apart. And there's no major damage anywhere except for the pile of bearing material that came out of there. So we'll clean all this up before we go back together. But like I said, we're out of time for today. So... Thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a like. I'd greatly appreciate that. So thank you for watching.